Okay, everyone. Um, so I think everyone's here. So let's get started. Um, I will be your moderator for today. My name is Enerol. And so in today's Discord stage, we will be talking about the Sapiens and Mongol NFT partnership. Uh, in what ways the partnership will go about uh, more information about the NFT passport that Sapiens is releasing, their future plans, and of course, to take questions and interact with our community here in Mongolia. So from Sapiens, I believe we've had a bit of a change in the people coming into our Discord stage. Um, so if everyone could start introducing their, themselves. Can we start well, with Ankit, maybe? Yeah, I will kick things off. So my name is Ankit. I am a co-founder and co-CEO at Sapien. And um, yeah, we founded this company back in 2018 with uh, Rob Giametti, my uh, co-founder. And uh, it's been an incredible journey so far. Uh, we are building the Republic of DAOs. Uh, and we've recently been growing our team rapidly. So we'll pass it off to uh, Missy start first with their introduction. Yeah, thanks Ankit. Hey everyone, I'm Missy. I'm the Chief Sustainability Officer. Um, my experience is mainly in environmentalism and I'm excited to come into Web3 and bring other nonprofits and small businesses and DAOs into Sapiens Republic of DAOs, which Ankit and Teja will talk more about. But yeah, thanks for having us, excited to be here. Awesome. Uh, I guess I'll introduce myself. I'm Tasia. I am the chief of product over at Sapien. Um, my background is in engineering. Um, and yeah, I'm also a founding member of the, the Sapien DAO, which we'll also be touching on in today's discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for introducing yourselves um, from Mongol NFT. Currently on stage, we have Gabit, Sabit, and Jack Jack, uh, otherwise known as Itril, and we have Adia joining us today. Um, so, continuing on, um, I was told about the Harambe facing off with the bull. Um, and could any one of you from Sapiens please um, kind of give some background on what happened there? and um, how you got around to meeting the Mongol NFT team. <laughs> so this is always an incredible story, and it's actually where uh, I met Jack-Jack uh, for the first time. Um, so it actually goes back to a WeWork in San Francisco. Uh, Rob and myself were you know, sitting there brainstorming pretty late one night. Uh, I think we entered the WeWork on a Saturday. It was like 8 a.m., and we were really just grinding almost till, you know, 9, 10 p.m. And this is really where, for us, a lot of the pieces were coming together for the Sapien Nation and the NFT passports that we wanted to launch. Um, and the room next to us, uh, Jack Jack was sitting there with a Bitcoin shirt on, and he was uh, in the process of launching. I think that's when you guys were launching the Mongo NFT marketplace. Uh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, you know, it's crazy because I had to go over because, you know, besides the, the Sapien team, there wasn't anyone else grinding that late on a Saturday. And I was like, hey, man, like, what are you up to? He's like, I'm launching one of the biggest marketplaces in Mongolia. And, you know, at that moment, we had a very brief conversation, but uh, certainly resonated with like with Jack Jack at a very deep level and um, in terms of like where the vision and where the future of DAOs was going to be. So um, a few weeks later, uh, we were in New York uh, on the other side of the coast, and uh, we were gearing up for NFT NYC. And uh, we were actually planning to launch a sort of early version of our passports. Uh, and we knew that we were a little bit understaffed. So at, at one point, I called Jack Jack on the phone. I was like, you need to fly over to New York. Uh, I'll, book, I'll you know, cover your flight, your hospitality. And we just needed to jump in with us and help us launch this sovereign digital nation. So Jack, Jack, I think you flew out, was it the next day or like a day later, you hopped on the plane, you flew on over, you were in New York and uh -huh. um, yeah, um, I don't know if you want to share a little bit from there, but uh, oh, yeah, that's, sure. yeah, yeah. that's, that's how like we met. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, at the time it was like a surprise to actually like have a call from my kids and we just met like two days ago, right? And just then the next day, like Ankit called me that, hey, like we are doing like this, uh, crazy thing, right? It's like boom, like 
putting like 10,000 bananas like uh, in front of like charging bull in uh, in Wall Street. And so this was kind of like, wow, it's like compelling. And uh, then then I surely, yeah, I surely I bought a ticket I show right after that one, after after we have a call. Then I uh, I just uh, came to, uh, I think, New York after just, uh, I think, one or two days. I don't exactly remember. I think it was one, yeah, after one day, I think, yeah. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. really great it's meeting with everybody. And it's like, well, it's like a lot of great energy. And uh, yeah, it was uh, a lot of like great times I have spent in New York uh, with exactly. these uh, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was you know, so amazing because we were, you know, doing this uh, stunt on Wall Street. We got on the front page of CNN, Fox News, uh, MSNBC, and a lot of international coverage as well. Uh, we actually built out this 400 pound a uh, gorilla of Harambe and put him in front of the raging bull in Wall Street with 10,000 bananas, as, as Josh I was saying. And the idea was to really show, uh, you know, some of the disparity in the sort of black box that is the, you know, the stock market and how people don't really have transparency uh, in how some of these, how complex some of these systems have, have gotten. Um, and Harambe is actually, you know, a Swahili uh, word. It means all pull together. And that really ties neatly to, to our vision of the future, which is this Republic of DAOs, which is this like new sort of vision for Web3 where communities can come together from all over the world and collaborate on this sort of shared new sort of metaverse space that's being built. Um, and I think that's like, that's, that's really where, you know, we really resonate with the, the whole Mongo NFT team um, on, on sort of building this out. So yeah, that's a little bit of background on that. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that story. That's definitely a very memorable um, first meet experience. Um, so let's continue on to our uh, questions. So I think our first question has come in, and I think this is a question that everyone um, wants to ask. Uh, what exactly will the Sapiens do in this cooperation, and will this uh, affect the coin, uh, the coins in any way? if anyone would like to answer that. Yeah, I'd say I can't uh, speak too much to the coin. Maybe um, Mongo NFT can. Um, but at least from our side, the way we're looking at it is we're designing uh, a full stack protocol for DAOs uh, that spans the social, informational, and economic layers. And right now, we're in the process of launching uh, our NFT passports, right? And that's the, the social piece of all this. Um, and it's the sort of like, it's, it's this uh, tool that we're looking to uh, work for identity uh, as a social ledger, and as a sort of an access token within and among DAOs. Um, so the idea here is that, you know, Mongo NFT DAO is, you know, growing right now very rapidly. And we want to sort of connect the Mongo NFT DAO to the broader uh, ecosystem. Um, and for example, like we have a few other DAOs that we're partnering with, and maybe Missy, you can touch on some of the, the DAOs that you've been having conversations with. But the idea is that we don't want DAOs to sort of be in isolation, but we want them to sort of be interconnected, right, socially and economically. And um, the Sapien protocol is looking to, to power that. Um, there's another piece too with the marketplace, but we can, we can dive into that uh, maybe in a second. Missy, do you want to touch on some of the DAOs that we've been talking with? Yeah, um, so it, it is pretty exciting, the, the amount of DAOs that we're talking to. So for example, we're talking to JournoDAO, and JournoDAO is made up of journalists, typically in the conventional like media space, but they're realizing that Web3 is really powerful and can get people to read really important stories more, such as about climate change and space exploration. And so these journalists created this JournoDAO um, and they are excited to come into our protocol. Um, in addition, we're talking to Rabbit Hole Studios DAO, and they've confirmed that they want to be a part of what we're building, and they are an artist collective. They do poetry and music. Um, many of them are musicians. Um, so those are two examples of different DAOs. And then we are talking to um, many nonprofits and small businesses that potentially want to create DAOs. Um, so bringing people who aren't typically into the in the Web3 space into the Web3 space because these tools are, again, so powerful that um, a lot of the missions that people have 
um, can be furthered by these tools. So for example, we are in discussions with a Hawaiian nonprofit that is focused on tree conservation, indigenous um, ancient forests in Hawaii. Um, they want to create a DAO um, and um, buy up land collectively um, to conserve the trees there. Um, so again, we have many different voices coming in um, and excited to have more people onboarded such as Mongol NFT DAO. So um, this is an opportunity for DAOs to come in and not only further their own missions, but collaborate with one another. Thank you so much. Um, oh, sorry, Jack, Jack, do you want to add on to that? Oh yeah, so uh, yeah, for uh, we are yeah going to work with uh, the Sapien, and Sapien is creating these uh, these tools for uh, creating DAOs, right? And so we are going to use that one to uh, launch our Mongol NFT DAO, and that's it. And also for the like coin one, it's there is uh, no kind of like direct kind of like, correlations uh, uh, for the coin and coin its price uh, for partnership in with a Sapien. Okay, um, so going on to our next question, uh, going back to the uh, NFT passport, um, what utilities will this passport hold and uh, how will it be used? Awesome, so yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So uh, I'd like to start first with, um, you know, the, the artistic value of these NFT passports and then move on to the utilities. Um, so each of these passports, is, as you guys can see from uh, my profile pic, um, and same with uh, Pamissa's and, and Teja's, each of these contains a artwork of a historical figure, you know, someone from the past that has inspired us that, you know, we wish was with us today to help spearhead this digital nation forward. We're looking to let people choose these historic figures. Uh, and then we're styling it through um, a machine learning pipeline that uh, Teja has actually developed. Um, and we're minting that onto our NFT passports. And the idea is really that, you know, we're standing on the shoulders of giants and we really want to appreciate the past before we, you know, carve this new path forward. Um, so that's the sort of art piece of it. And then in terms of the utility side, uh, we're really looking at this as the all-in-one tool for, uh, you know, identity and sort of tracking your contributions to different DAOs in the in the ecosystem, right? So just like your real passport, right? It contains stamps as you sort of travel the world. And when you look back at your passport, you see the story that you've written through your travels. We want to bring that same thing to the digital space where you can go and contribute to a DAO and the DAO can like can stamp you and, and recognize your contributions. Or say, hey, this person has made a tremendous, um, you know, it has made a huge achievement, and it can be uh, sort of uh, put in the system as a title uh, onto the NFT passport. Um, and the idea here is really that we can build these emergent networks of trust, right? Where you know a DAO, can, like suppose you know we have uh, Mongo NFT DAO and the Sapien Nation DAO. Um, if the Sapien Nation DAO gives let's say, uh, accreditation to Jack-Jack and says, hey, Jack-Jack has made a you know, great contribution to our, 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 our DAO. Then when he goes back to the Mongo NFT DAO, they can decide to trust the judgments of the Sapien Nation DAO. So this sort of emergent way of creating uh, sort of trust between DAOs is really, really powerful. And that's the sort of the core essence of the, the passport utility. Um, happy to dive into to more detail with any any of these things. Right. Um, you mentioned about tracking um, your contributions. Um, I remember reading that that will be done through a social ledger. Um, will these contributions be visible to the public or is this something that will just kind of be tracked um, privately or on your own passport, say? Yeah, that's, that's also a really great question. Um, so the key thing here is that uh, we want to be privacy preserving, um, and the way to do that is being private by default, right? So I, I think, you know, I know Jack Jack was at ETH Denver, but there were some really great talks 
at that conference. Uh, in particular, Vitalik got up on say, stage and said, hey, look, like the, the primitives need to be privacy preserving, right? Because data gets continually sort of leaked um, on the internet. And one thing, what we're proposing really with the social ledger is that um, it's built on ZK Snark's technology so that you can you only reveal what you need to reveal to different communities, right? So the analogy for that is like when you go to a bar and you have to take out your license and give and get your whole license scanned, you're leaking a lot of information, right? You're showing your you know full name, your address, your height, your weight, your eye color. All that is metadata that doesn't need to be revealed. When instead you can just submit a proof where you verify that you're over 21 years of age, right? And by doing so, you don't have to reveal all your other personal data. So the idea with the social ledger piece of the passport is, is the same, right? That you go and participate with these different DAOs, um, you know, like Missy mentioned, the Journo DAO as an example, or, you know, there's another one we're talking to, Afropolitan. Um, but you only need to reveal what you need to reveal. Uh, and everything else should be private by default. So that's, that's the thinking that we're uh, developing this, this social ledger piece with. Um, and the idea is, again, that everything is sort of tracked on this ledger. And it becomes your story, your contributions, your sort of, um, you know, the path that you've carved in the metaverse. Right. That makes sense. Thank you. Um, so I remember, um, I believe on the 14th, the pre-sale of your NFT passport started. And right currently now we're at the public sale of the passport. So um, how will our Mongolian community be able to join or purchase the passport? Sure. Yeah. So for those that are, um, you know, NFT collectors, enthusiasts, or just, you know, proponents for, for the Web3 space. Uh, our public sale is live right now. So if you go to sapi.network, um, you can actually make a purchase of one of these passports. And again, it's unlike any other NFT project. These aren't procedurally generated. You're actually inputting your historical figure of choice. And as long as they're not reserved, um, you, can, you can pick them. And you can choose the image that you want to have stylized and put onto your passport. Um, so each of these passports right now, we're putting them up for sale for uh, 0.15 ETH. Uh, and we'll be running this uh, up through mint date on April 20th. So um, it's just, just under a month, about you know, a little bit more than three weeks. Uh, we'll be minting these passports into, into people's savings accounts. Um, but yeah, available now. We've been having some really great picks. Uh, and yeah, like I think today, who did I see? Let me see. Today we had um, Aristotle picked, Jim Morrison, uh, Plotinus, a really great philosopher, Simon, uh, Simon Bolivar, um, and just some really great way, like it's, it's a testament to, you know, what people, what values people care for and who do they care for um, from the past. So yeah, pick your favorite sort of heroes and champion your values and bring them into the Sapien Nation. That's, that's what we're pushing for. So um, you were uh, talking about the minting process for the NFT passports. I remember that was next up on your roadmap. Um, what in the near future is planned uh, in terms of your roadmap or what you hope to achieve in the near future? Yeah, one of the most immediate things is we want to make it uh, as simple to launch a DAO as it is to launch a subreddit or a Facebook group. Right, so this includes the end-to-end -end tooling, um, and we know like the definition of DAO is very, you know, uh, uh, cloudy at times. Right, some people have a Telegram group chat with a token and call themselves a DAO, but really, our vision for this Republic of DAOs is a place where all these communities are coming together uh, and working towards this like new vision for Web three, uh, and and using the protocol. Uh, as a sort of shared layer, um, you know, starting with the passport, but then going quickly onto the, the information, the way that information itself is being uh, curated in the network, and then economically, right? How are DAOs going to eventually invest into each other, right? Bring out, building out that framework and that as a protocol, 
where you know DAO, like it's so easy for DAOs to take a, a stake in each other. That's that's where the future is going. So our immediate roadmap is again just making it super simple to launch DAOs and connecting them in a way that uh, creates this win-win economy. Um, so like in a bigger sort of bigger picture concept, how do you see the metaverse evolving or sapiens in general? Um, and what are sapiens aspirations for it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is something that uh, our team has thought quite a bit about. Our vision for the metaverse is not one in which the is just dominated by the virtual world. I think there's a lot of people that are sort of pitching this idea that, hey, we're all going to live these virtual lives and that's the end all be all. But that's something we reject, right? We think that this, where we're heading with the metaverse is this seamless blending of the physical and digital, right? Where we just have this, like, we, you know, we can just have human experiences, you know, just like, you know, me, <laughs> just like I met Jack Jack in San Francisco and we, you know, did this, um, went on an adventure in New York. <laughs> it needs to be grounded fundamentally in, in, in real life. And we think that that's fundamentally, that's the tools that we want to build for. We want to build technology that you can just put away. And that's, um, that's something that we're really passionate about, right? I, I know <laughs> taking up a lot of, uh, uh, speaking time here. I know Teja, you joined Sapien just because, you know, you felt like people and society wasn't doing enough on things like climate change, for example. Right. And I think the, the view that we have with the metaverse is, hey, let's solve the problems in the real world and not just not just ignore them. Um, so that's that's what we're trying to build for. I don't know, Teja, if you want to jump in there, too. Right. Uh, I mean, I think you got it pretty good. Yeah, uh, I don't think that the metaverse is something that should be, you know, plotted out and sold, right? It, it, it's a digital space. Um, and I, I think any sort of plays that, that suck us more into that digital space is, you know, it's antithetical to what we as developers should do, right? We should be consciously making products that help us and not commodify us. And I think it's important to note that Tasia's background is also very technical and, and, and on kids too. So they have this view that we should be blending with the physical, even though they are developers at the same time. Um, continuing on, um, how do you guys plan for uh, increased adoption among the general public that may not be as familiar um, with the metaverse? I, yeah, I could take this one. So I think that DAOs are a really great way for people to enter the space um, because the concept behind them is so collaborative. And so a lot of our outreach to um, organizations such as small businesses and nonprofits, not in the Web3 space, um, and bringing them into the Web3 space is really important for mass adoption. So bringing people who are already organized around a cause and then taking what they've already built and then giving them the Web3 tools uh, and the tools that Sapien is building it is really powerful. Obviously, there's like a, there is a lot of education that goes around it, but Sapien is here to support people throughout that process and help with the learning um, because we're also learning too as we're building. So um, we're trying to tailor our protocol to what really provides value to people. And it, when the value is there, then the mass adoption comes too. All right, um, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, do we have any more questions from our current people on the stage or anyone in the audience? Um, final call for questions in the stage chat. Yeah, I'd like to add more points on that. Um, uh, basically, <clears throat> you know, to, to both communities, Lysapian and Mongolian, we have uh, 
I'm quite good community here, so uh, I'm just uh, telling the people that we need to support the uh, you know second community, uh, and then it's uh, as well as you know the second community in future in this current community will collaborate each other and let's get to know each other to support each other right basically the power of being support each other communities uh, basically it's it's the way to you know. Uh, to, to, to push forward to faster uh, there's a lot of lot of community and all that out there right so that's the power of thing that's, that's why I'm trying to promote all the community people here yeah okay um any other questions or comments from anyone on our stage Oh, so uh, did we uh, did we uh, share the kind of link to actually where maybe people can actually buy the password NFT from a Sapien? Yeah, Jack, Jack, I just tried to share a link, but it says that I'm not allowed to chat any links. Um, oh, that's weird. Okay. Can you send <laughs> me, can, can you DM me and can you send me then I will share it on the on the stage. Yeah, sure. I did drop it in our Telegram group. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah, and then like an Asafians dot network has a uh, five button there, right? Yep, yep, yep. I actually just dropped it too. Jack Jack just sent it over. Um, yeah, it's a very seamless process uh, handled through MetaMask, and yeah, it's a very exciting sort of machine learning pipeline that's been engineered in the back to to generate these figures. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, just to add here as well, uh, uh, we uh, so I'm Keith Teja. We met first. We met in New York, and since then, this whole uh, the atmosphere, the energy, been really, really good, guys. That that's super exciting as well, and we are super excited and grateful that. Basically, uh, Sapiens and Mongol NFT were also offering basically to our Mongolian community the opportunity to also be part of this amazing journey, guys. Because I, I'm pretty sure this journey is going to be super exciting because uh, from the fact I know that and Keith's team, everybody's super, super exciting, guys. So, yeah. So, I think it's just the beginning of something great, guys. Yeah, I really appreciate those uh, words, Kavit, and I couldn't couldn't agree more. I think this is uh, sort of the ground floor for people to become citizens of the Sapien Nation, and you know it's it's really exciting. Our you know roadmap, what we want to do uh, with this password. One cool feature I'll I'll just point to you again is I don't know if I got to it. Um, there's a signing functionality in these passports, so once they are signed, they become soul bound. Uh, or actually linked to your wallet address, uh, at which point they're not transferable. So it's this, uh, and then that's when the utilities nice. around identity really open up. Um, so that's something we're really excited about because people will, you know, there's a natural sort of selection in the market for people that want to be citizens of this nation and want to contribute. And we really want this to be a global thing. So again, I really appreciate you guys giving us the stage and allowing us to talk about our vision for Sapien. Super, thank you. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. I think that's just the start, right? The guys, you know, it's just the start and we're gonna talk uh, like, uh, like monthly or quarterly, uh, doesn't matter. We're gonna talk about our progress, the process, like, uh, what, what the second community is doing and then as well as Mongol entity community doing. And like maybe potentially with the second community out there and explore the guys created and we, we, we also, can jump on and just you know support you guys so pretty excited to start with this journey okay yeah thanks guys yeah um thank you everyone um i believe jack jack has posted the uh link for the nft passport on the stage chat if anyone is interested oh uh, and we i guess we have our final question from our stage chat um so the audience has said uh, I've looked into some information on Sapiens. Uh, it was very interesting that the metaverse of Sapiens 
will be the next level of social platform. I believe our audience yeah. person is still typing, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, one thing I can say is, um, oh, okay, so there, I think this is uh, Dematic, uh, how it sort of feels as a sort of user of the this uh, of this network. I think one key thing is that where we're going with this space and Web3 in general is a shift from platforms to protocols, right? So we actually began this journey, you know, a few years back, and we were thinking about it a Web3 social platform. But over the years, we realized that, you know, there's no, there's no such thing, right? Where we're going in the future is these token primitives that can power these next generation communities that we call DAOs. Uh, so as a, as a uh, sort of individual, what we're ultimately, what is the ultimate experience is basically reclaiming your, your agency and really having say as to where you're spending time and which communities you're participating in, right? So it's going to be sort of imagine like um, you know right now we have discords, right? And each each community has its own Discord and it's an isolation. But the future that we're looking to build with Sapien is this interconnected network, which feels like a social network of DAOs, where you have the ability to easily jump in and out of different communities. And contribute in your time, however you see fit. Maybe you know, jump to the Sapien Nation community and do a few tasks and get some bounty in the form of tokens, right? So we want this thing to be very dynamic, right? Where it's like the convergence of like the gig economy and the creator economy and like the artisanal economy, right? This this is where it's all heading. Where it's ultimate sort of power in the individual and community's hands to to how they want to spend their time and what impact they want to make on the world. Um, so uh, yeah, I hope that provides a little bit of, uh, of an answer there. Do we need the, there's a question here, do we need the NFT passport to access the metaverse? Um, yeah, for the safety nation, the, the NFT passport is the tool that lets you sort of, you know, uh, travel to the different communities that are part of the safety nation. Um, thank you for answering that question. Um, do we have any last comments from anyone on our stage before we wrap up? Maybe just one more question for yeah, and kids. Yeah, like, can we buy the password to NFT with the ape coin? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question, Jack. <laughs> it would it would only make sense, right? <laughs> but uh, no, as of as of right now, we're just uh, uh, taking uh, payments in uh, ETH for purchases of the passport. Mm -hmm. um, maybe in the future with uh, other batches, we can open it up. But for now, it's uh, just ETH. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, this was just, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. That's very, you know, interesting. Right? If, you, if you guys promote to a community, that would be great, like, you know, <laughs> just, uh, you know, taking them as, as a payment option from a to, you know, the Haranda, the big Haranda put you, you guys, you put them where it's, it's kind of connected, you know, think. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. It's a, something we can discuss with the team. <laughs> um, any more last comments? I'm good, yeah. <laughs> okay, yes. sounds good. Um, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for taking time out of their busy days to listen in on our Discord stage, as well as, of course, the Sapiens team. Uh, for joining us today on this stage um, and answering questions from our community. Um, we will be posting uh, information and the recording of this to our social media uh, for those who have joined late or were not able to join at all. Um, there will be subtitles in Mongolian as well. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you guys. Thank you. Let's do it like in next season, maybe in like you know, a couple of months later. And uh, as I said, this is just start, right? So let's share uh, every other information to our community, between our community, guys. 
yeah, thanks for everyone here listening here. Thank you guys. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, we really, really Thank you guys. appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.